side to side, flexing the legs. He's looking comfortable, just like a sprinter. There he is, shaking his legs a little bit. We're coming closer and closer. This is the big win he wanted, remember. Last week he blew it. Wasn't his fault he had bite problems or maybe problems in the legs. They're doing the left turn here. We're getting closer and closer. And this is the fresh cobbles that David and I were talking about this morning. They couldn't quite make 50 kilometres, so they've thrown in some 300 metres of fresh cobbles. Remember, they're going to do 300 metres here, and then they're going to turn right. But what's happening here? Johan Mazzeo starting to make a move, or is he? Or is it me just getting excited? I think they've got a right-hand turn, because we're seeing the stadium. They're going to come onto the stadium any minute, and I'm going to hand you over to David. One kilometre to go, then. Mazzeo looking for his uh, first victory in this race. The last Belden to win the race was Eddie Plankard in 1990. The whole of the crowd here is going absolutely banana. We've got Duca Lassell has come alongside our commentary point now. He must be pleased with what he's seeing, with a big turnout of people here. But it's not a French in the leading group. It's just been dominated by the Italians, though, as up the front, then, that man, Mazzeo, is leading out at the moment. Mazzeo is on the front, swinging the side of the stadium, erupts as he hits the, uh, the concrete track and comes into our side at the finish point. Young uh, Russell Williams here is getting so excited. He's a track man, Bill Russell. Twenty-odd times the British champion on the track, and now he's enjoying this with Mazzeo on the front. Is that the best place to be? Surely not. Bottle I'm, Arm is a good sprinter, Russell. I'm just going to come in quickly. This could be a mistake here for Mazzeo, because he got Botolami right as well. Taffy's giving it the big arm, but this could be a mistake for Museo because Botolami has got the perfect idea. They're on the last lap. This could be it. Botolami's looking around, realizing it can be between Botolami and Museo. Museo uh, looks cool and collect. I'll leave it to you. Taffy says, Go on, you two. I don't uh, sprint. I've done my work. I've done my share. But it almost looks like a triumphant lap of honor for Museo. A past World Cup for winner overall. And now they start to come down the back straight and they look through here. They're almost letting it roll away, but you can never tell. I say Botolami has beaten it, but now they're putting the hand up. Look at this. This is a complete lap of honor. One, two, and three by the Mappe team. I've never seen anything like this before in this race or in a classic of this statue before. The 100th anniversary of the Paru Bay will be celebrated all the way throughout Italy and throughout Belgium. One, two, and three. Mappe triumph with Museo first across the line. Bortolami alongside him, tap into third spot. That was a dominant piece of bike racing, the like of which I've not seen before. Yes, they challenged one, two and three for the same team in the Fresh Fallone last year, but this was something else. It was over the hardest course in the world with more than their fair share of problems. The punctures that Museo had, the punctures that Ballerini had, they triumphed against adversity and Museo rides home the victor, the 1996 Paris Le Bay. And that's just how a team should be. Look at that. They realised the team leader, Jean Museo, he had hard luck last week. And look at that. One, two, three for Mappe. Museo saying, come on, boys, come together. Look at that. Mappe's on the front. Mappe won. That's all that matters. Doesn't matter who wins. And if we come back to the, the fourth and fifth place, can Ballerini possibly get fourth place? Remember, Zanini, the, the Italian from GS, is a fast sprinter, but um, Ballerini's been making him do the work. This is the fresh lot of cobbles that we saw this morning they put in to make it 50 kilometres of cobbles. So Zanini, the uh, GS rider, he's got his hands out on the grip for him. They come into the track. They do a lap and a half. It looks like he's moving his arm, but Ballerini's not going to come through. Now, this is going to be a real sprint. Before, was just, oh, I can't it was playing because obviously they did the hard work and got the gap and the team captain won but well, here we go way back in 1978 79 and 80 Moser did the triple the great Italian had three consecutive wins on the trot and showed that Italy was in with a shout in this race they've done well over the years I said about Coppi dominating it in 1950 winning by six minutes but the Italian team now the Mappe GB team remember GB is also sponsored by the uh, supermarket group from Belgium so many Belgians here at the moment it's been a real festival to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the uh, Paris-Roubaix. This great classic race then today and they're covering 263 kilometres and Frattini's on the front searching for the fourth place and uh, Valerini Lascio's victor is being towed round after three punctures. What an unfortunate day for him. So Zanini's on the front. I, I know he's just looked under his arm. He's trying to keep the gear down low. He's going to be looking over his shoulder the whole time. Valerini is just there. Remember they're going for fourth place. There's a little lot there at the corner of his eye. Maybe he's going to wait for Ballerini he needs to make the jump or not. There he goes. He's looking again, looking just like a sprinter. Going down the back straight. There he is, looking over his right shoulder. Ballerini's going. They're going for fourth and fifth now. They're side by side. Canton needed a sprinter. Hold him up. Ballerini's squeezing down. This is great. Look at this. Squeezing again. Shoulders rubbing. This is for fourth and fifth place. Ballerini's having trouble. Zanini's coming through. And it looks like Ballerini might get his powering down here. He's looking to take
take something out of this one, but no, Fratini, uh, Zanini gets it to take the fourth spot. Zanini, who was 20th last year in the uh, uh, Paris-Roubaix, 20th man moves into fourth, just off the podium. The man who won last year then just did what he could, but he...